The following thoughts and opinions we're going to discuss regarding this album are strictly of our own personal interests. We are not professional music reviewers. We encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter in each episode, but we do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence. You are welcome to take what we say regarding the albums we rate with a grain of salt. Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rate the Record podcast, episode 47. But here's the thing about episode 47. It's not just a new episode. It is like the official first year anniversary of the actual Rate the Record podcast, not just the channel, not just like whatever the image is. It is literally like one year since we've done episode one. Oh, my God. That... uh... You know what? For those listening that have been here from day one, what is wrong with you? Why are you still here? They need some time to kill them. We are just the the weird idiots to do it. Like, thank you. But like, man, if I were you, I would have tuned out after episode three. So I commend you for your patience. And thank you so much for sticking with us. Yeah. After they heard Dream Theater and through her eyes, and that's when they all <laughs> tuned out because they all they all agreed with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I don't agree. But yes, 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 yes. Of course. But then again, you're uh, so your hosts who have been doing this for way too long now are Chris and. Savannah. Exactly. That is. A, and you can even sing your way. And sure, why not? It's our anniversary. We can do whatever we want. Yeah. And by that, I mean, we have to actually do an episode because that's kind of what we're supposed to be doing here on the podcast. But so th- I should say thank you very much for joining us. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this. And hopefully you've been enjoying the entire one year worth of shit that we've been doing. I mean, you, it must be if you're still here. But if you're new here, that's even better. Regardless of how long you've been here, make sure you like, subscribe, rate, comment, share, follow. All those things really help build that musical community that we are trying trying oh so hard to build all the time brick by brick and we want you to be a part of it so you can do that by leaving like ratings or reviews over in the audio world because it helps us get noticed uh, in the charts a little more and of course on youtube uh we're still we're getting closer we're still trying to hit that 100 subscriber mark because when we do of course we're doing the free record giveaways one record a month for every month that we're over 100 subscribers we're getting there so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like button just because also that helps to other people find the video other people can subscribe and again you might get a free record out of it yeah all the stuff he said Woo. Uh, you, you think i'd get used to saying it by now but i'm st- i still have like point form on my screen here like <laughs> say this say this you think it'd just be second nature by now but no i don't ever learn well before we started recording you did have to ask me what was it we were giving away again so i understand i understand well because you you're always saying oh we'll give you five dollars we'll give you a lock of hair so i can never remember what we're giving away no well to be fairly Fair. Okay. I understand that. Um, I did take it upon myself to offer my lock of hair. The first time I didn't lump you into something, I will give a lock of hair. Don't remember what the conditions were. So I will make up new ones, but my lock of hair is on the line. If you win one of the free records, you'll get a lock of hair from Savannah. So if you know she's getting more and more bald each episode, that's because we've been giving away records. This, this, (laughs) (laughs) this whole half of my head just gone. But hey, free stuff. Everyone loves free stuff, so go ahead and do that. But if you do want to help the show out financially, you want to help us build and grow as, you know, musical community and such, there is ko-fi.com slash rate the record. You can donate there. $5 a month gets you into the RTR Club. You get a shout out from us. You'll have a thank you, uh, your name on a thank you card at the end of the episodes and everything like that. Exclusive content over on Kofi that we'll be releasing only there and nowhere else. And, and, and if you just so happen to be in a band and you got like a song that you want us to listen to and maybe even rank on our own little Kofi scale there, we will do that too. But so write the record, sorry, Kofi.com slash write the record. That's what I meant to say. $5 a month gets you into the RTR club. Check it out today. Yeah. And if your song has heavy bass in it, it's an automatic six. At least. Bare minimum. At least. And of course, that and all the other streaming links that if you want to give us ratings, reviews, everything like that can be found at ratetherecord.ca with all of our social links and everything like that. I feel like it took a while to get through this little beginning intro part just to tell people where to go. Yeah, well, let's go for it. That pun will come up later. (laughs) Yeah, it will. And the reason why it'll come up later is because we have to start talking about today's band. And I mean, it is the anniversary of Rate the Record. And our very first episode was Pearl Jam with uh, with their album, 10. So it only makes sense that a year later, we go finally into their second album versus uh, 
To be honest, I've kind of been waiting to do this one since we've done episode one, but I knew in the beginning we were going to like spread things apart, but then it made more sense. Like, what if we just waited an entire year? And then we did. Hell yeah. And then every year on the same date, we just do Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam. And then as soon as we run out of albums, show's over. Done. Well, and that's, I think that's kind of going to be the thing now where when we do our two year anniversary, it's going to be like what, Vitalogy or whatever the hell the album's called? I think so. Yeah. If that's Vitalogy. the third one. Yeah, so, I mean, spoiler alert, next anniversary, I mean, it just makes sense by this point to do yet another Pearl Jam. So you'll have to wait an entire year before listening to another Pearl Jam episode. Oh, I cannot wait until we do 2013's Lightning Bolt. Yeah, 20 years from now. And didn't they just release an album not too long ago called, like, Gigatron or something along the lines of that? So we have a lot of Pearl Jam, so we have to keep going for years now. Oh, my God, we are locked in. One day we'll get to Riot Act. One day we'll get to their self-titled album in 2005, I think it was. I don't. We got a lot. But anyways, today is Versus, their second album. And so this is where I usually give some sort of description about the band. We've done Pearl Jam before, so I kind of really condense this biography down just to mainly talk about the album. But in case you needed any sort of reminder, so Pearl Jam was formed out of Seattle in 1990. They were one of the big four in the 90s grunge scene. They released their debut album 10 in 1991, which again, we covered a year ago, and that's going be linked up here very awkward episode to watch but please go so (laughs) cringe inducing yeah but you know what the album was so successful maybe not so much on our shows did decently enough but it was successful enough in the world that they went ahead and released the next album versus in 1993 so the album was released in October 1993 through Epic Records. It was recorded at The Site in Nicasio, California and Potato Head in Seattle. <laughs> Interesting name. So the album gained a lot of positive reviews across the board with the US ta- USA Today and Sydney Morning Herald giving it 4 out of 4 stars. Rolling Stone gave it 4 out of 4.5 out of 5. All Music gave it a 4 out of 5 and a bunch of other good scores too that I, I just there's too many to read so you know condensing down to a few yeah uh the album went to number one in australia canada netherlands ireland new zealand norway sweden and the u.s five different publications put it on their list of the 100 best albums of the 90s and the album also went 17 times platinum in four different countries the album spawned four singles go daughter animal and dissident cool wait really really oh that's it oh okay I also thought that elderly woman behind the counter in a small town was a single, but no, apparently it's not, even though it's on the radio, it's currently yeah, on the radio. I thought rear view mirror was a single. Weird. Uh, I, I know that was the name of their greatest hits in the two thousands yeah. there, but yeah, I apparently was, I mean, this was according to Wikipedia. I, yeah. I, if it's wrong, blame Wikipedia, not me. I was just literally reading it off that. Wow. That probably stemmed from requests and man having heard those songs so often on the radio those requests must have been just flooding in except for the part where i don't ever remember hearing go no i've heard it live but that's about as much as i've ever heard of it go and animal i've only heard on the album or live but never heard them i've heard animal on the radio once oh yeah yeah like like once or twice type thing interesting and i mean daughters uh, daughter and dissident are two i've heard a lot of so yeah oh yeah a lot I mean, okay, so with that said, oops, I just stopped my timer. Fantastic. That's going to be shit in (laughs) editing. So with that said, that was nine minutes in. Hopefully that's not going to really do anything for me in editing. Regardless, let's just start talking about the album now because that's what we have to do. Okay, Okay, so, I mean, I should go back and start this podcast over again, but I'm not going to. Song number one, Go. We've been making Go puns since, like, you know, before the podcast even started recording. (laughs) Yes, yes. Actually, you know what? For all of that and the inability to see me roll my eyes at you, I'm going to take these glasses off. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But you're you're obligated to keep the hat on. I'm going to keep the cone on just until I poke something and forget it's there. Yeah, the shame cap. Okay, so anyways, first track, go. So go ahead and tell me about it. So just from the beginning, like the beginning buildup, you really know that something's going to happen. It's just getting there. I really like how energetic it is, and I really like the bass. I don't know if it's the tone or if it's just I can hear each string sort of slapping, but I always like the bass in this song. Um, Yeah, I found this song a little musically repetitive. Uh, It's really just the lead guitar that sort of adds some spice over the same sort of riff. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I feel like that's like a note to go across the entire album too, because yeah, yeah, there is a lot of repetition in in uh, this album. Like when it comes to the composition, especially certain songs more than others. But I'm pretty yeah. sure that'll come up in my notes once we get there too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like a great energy to start the song. Absolutely. Like it's um, it's the same way that how the 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 first album ten, uh, the song once kind of kicked off the album like in a really energetic yes, type yes, of way. Yes, so yes. this this is kind of like the same feeling to me. Not the same song, but just like you know a big kickstart go type thing nope no pun intended there yeah (laughs) that's exactly what it is um the only thing is i feel like the chorus could have been a little stronger though because like everything going on sounded really great but the only problem was like the mix was like a little underwhelming going into it maybe it was just in the headphones i guess i don't know about over speakers but in my headphones like i don't know it was just spread a little too thin so it didn't feel as climactic as it should have and like Again, it sounds really cool. I really like the chorus. It's just too bad the mix is underwhelming. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this track definitely works best as an opener. Like, I mean, anywhere else in the album, it likely wouldn't have sat as well. So yeah, great way to start the album. I definitely agree. It really pulls you in with the energy and your sort of comparison with Once Off 10. I always had these two songs sort of lumped together for that same reason. They have the same sort of vibe to it um but yeah i uh i liked it i'd listen to it again but uh yeah that's that's about it i realize i say but yeah there's i don't know that's just one of those filler everyone has filler terms yeah but it's only after you keep doing it and it's like oh wow i'm 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 a robot well, it's kind of like when you're done saying things and I just go, exactly, or something along the lines. It's like my brain doesn't know what else to say, so I have that one word just to transfer me from that thought to the next yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, Recording this show has definitely brought my attention to some of my vocal quirks that I didn't realize I had day to day, and then I, I listen to myself going, huh, I really do say that a lot. Well, this is the kind of show that'll help increase your social skills. Maybe asterisk, uh-huh. like, don't take that seriously. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, it'll help increase your social skill, skills, asterisk, and down below, it's just like, will likely not increase your social <laughs> it will, skills. <laughs> it will not. It may give you cancer. Yeah, and we do, uh, we do claim no liability, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yes. Alrighty then, we'll move on to song number two then, Animal, which is probably, to, at least to me, aside from Daughter being like one of the more memorable tracks on this entire album. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like, this is just more great energy kind of keeping in oh, pace yeah. with the first song. So I think it's great, but it's definitely more aggressive, which is even like more noteworthy, I guess, especially yeah. being this early into the album. So like, you know, you're experiencing something a little different as it goes on. So it feels pretty good. Um, I do like the role reversal in this one of the verse and the chorus, because like the the chorus is definitely like a lot. It feels faster paced. It's heavier and everything like that. And then the chorus gets like generally quieter most most of the times it's quieter as it's like building back up to explode back into the verse. So I think yeah. that's really super cool. Um, it's a super catchy and singable chorus too. That's the best part considering you can't really understand some of the words in the verse. <laughs> oh my uh, God. Typical yeah. Eddie Vedder fair going on here. Yeah. Um, I absolutely do remember singing along to this one when they uh, played it live. I, yeah. I've only seen Pearl Jam once. It was like uh, back in September, 2005 at Cops Call. See, I was Cops Call at the time. That's the first Ontario center. Yeah, I actually do remember being at that show, singing along to it. It was great. That may have been the same tour that I saw them in uh, in Thunder Bay. I mean, very likely. Weird, yeah. No, but that's the only time that I've seen them too, so. I, I think I, at the time, I think my mom won tickets on the radio and she's like, here, you can go. Yo, that's how I got <laughs> tickets too. I won them on the radio. That's hilarious. Were you there with a then significant other? No, so okay. so I'll see just, how much of this we can like relate yeah, to here. <laughs> uh, just like a little side story. Um, so Pearl Jam and Billy Idol were coming to town, and I had asked my dad to go get me Pearl Jam tickets. He said, I'm not waiting outside to get tickets. No. So he wanted to go see Billy Idol with my younger brother. So he went and bought tickets for Billy Idol. So I ended up entering a contest on the radio. I won Pearl Jam tickets. I wanted to bring a friend of mine. She didn't want to go. So I asked my dad. So him and I ended up going with Billy Idol. My brother ended up not going with my dad. So he ended up taking me. So I ended up going to both of them anyways. Wow. Lucky. Hell yeah. Except for the part where I'm not a big Billy Idol fan, but still, I mean, that must've been exciting for you at the very least. Oh, hell yeah. Any, any live show at that age, even now I'm, I'm into it. I love it. 
Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I only yeah. really have one more note for Animal 2, and it's, it's a very small note, but the thing is, like, it caught me enough to want to write about it. Uh, there's this, there's point a point in the second chorus where, like, there's a hot mic moment where when Eddie's screaming to the microphone, you can hear the mic clipping. Like, you can hear the distortion <laughs> of the microphone because he's so loud. Yeah. He screams the word animal into it. Uh, I love that they left that in. It just adds to that, like, raw, grungy kind of feeling. So I really like when bands do that kind of thing, and it actually works. This one did. So, yeah, really enjoyed it. Really thought this was great. And Animals is all, Animal is always a fantastic song. Um, with that point um, of leaving sort of imperfections in, I do have that note later in the album. So I'm glad that that was a thing that they did. Um, for me, I really liked how they kept up the similar energy with Go, just sort of really bust through those doors of this album. Um, I can totally see this song being on 10 so I don't know if they wrote it back then, just recorded it for here, but I can, it audibly fits to me. Um, like Go, and I assume many tracks going forward, this one also has the main riff sort of trucking along with the lead guitar, sort of funky strumming in behind. But if you're not really paying attention, all you're going to hear is that lead riff. So I feel like they kind of, they, I, I don't know if they just weren't confident enough to put it out there or if it was just the producer that really wanted to get that sort of grungy sound up front. But I kind of wish that some of those little nuances with the lead guitar or sort of back and forth weren't so buried underneath everything. Um, I know it kind of gets better as the years and albums go on, but with this one, I kind of miss that. Um, and with the drum tone, it's not too reverby, but it like has enough that I imagine when you hit the drum, it like the drum head is so tight that the stick bounces back. And oh, for yeah. some reason, I really like that sound. So I, I appreciated that. Yeah, it sounds like they recorded it in like a big wide open room or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that a lot. Um, just kind of going back for a minute because you said like it, this feels like a song that could fit on 10 mm -hmm. and like I know this album was like released two years later so obviously they had like you know time to really get this one out and hammer it out and everything like that yeah um wh what's interesting to me is like because I've not noted before like you know a lot of bands with their first album trying to find their first sound and everything like that and I mean this being the second album you're still going to be playing on that but there is a lot of there's a lot of moments on this album where you can kind of see where they were going to be heading yes yeah well, I mentioned that going forward yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we're going to agree on a lot of the same notes too because like yeah like this still has touches of the first album all over but then there's also like these new things that they're trying out and just like really kind of going for so i think that's interesting how you're seeing that on this album yeah especially but, knowing where they end up right yeah exactly and so like animal felt like yeah like it felt like it could fit on 10 but at the same time it feels like a progression of what 10 was versus like you know driving it forward a little more maybe that's why they called it versus Maybe they did versus <laughs> and then the third album Vitalogy. So then you have to like to put them all of them as a tr some weird trilogy that makes no sense at all. Yeah. yeah. Ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> but please don't tune out. Oh, I, I thought you were going to say a OK and then just dissociate for a little oh, while. God. Oh, God. Just turn turn everything off. All right. We'll move on. Uh, speaking of uh, taking sound in new directions, because I, they didn't really have a song like this in the first album. Song number three, yeah. Daughter, probably the most recognizable song on this album. Oh, definitely. Um, just listening to it in the layout of the album, uh, I wasn't sure that I enjoyed the breaks being pulled so early tempo wise. But as the song goes on, it does pick up. It starts to feel more natural. So it just sort of the more I was listening to it in the context of the song before and after it, it started to feel fine. But I figured it was worthy enough to make a note of. Um, I do really like the acoustic guitar opening and that it's kept as a mainstay throughout the whole track. It just wasn't an intro and then just jumped to fully electric going on. So that was cool. Um, it also lends itself to playing the song solely acoustically, you know, as a fan or some sort of wonder wall experience or um, you're, you're at a pub and it's they happen to be like thursday night and they're just playing like you know wild horses by the rolling stones yeah. wonder wall by oasis and then daughter by pearl yeah. jam oh yeah yeah because your band didn't show up or it's just you singer songwriter playing covers although that really hey, doesn't make mic any... night. hey welcome free yeah. beer yeah exactly <laughs> and uh i i did notice 
that the drums seem to follow the downward strums on the acoustic guitar. And it kind of like makes those strums sort of pop because they end in a drum hit. There are certain points where it's fairly noticeable. And I, I really liked that. I don't know what it is about that sound or that feeling. Maybe it's just a little more intensity, but uh, for an acoustic E song, it's, uh, it's really nice. Yeah, it is. And uh, th- that was kind of the thing I was mentioning earlier about, like, you know, you can see the direction they were kind of trying to start to go in uh, with this album. Because, again, going back to 10, I don't really recall acoustic tracks. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm just not remembering it. Pro- it's been a while since we've listened to it, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, like, this is obviously, like, a standout for that for that reason. And, that, yeah, it's a very big come down from the previous tracks, but at the same time, it still gets, like, bouncy enough like in its like composition and its rhythm and everything like that. So it's not just a complete hard left turn into something softer. So it's not so like so bad in that sense. Yeah. Uh, it's incredibly catchy. I mean, obviously far yeah. more user friendly than the previous two tracks and like considering yeah. that the other two were also singles. I mean, like this is probably the one that people will latch on to the most as compared to others. So Yo, yeah, you, you can definitely see that in more ways than one. Um, it's a, clean tone like on mo- most of the entirety of the sound like there's obviously like few moments of like electric in there like there's like a small solo and everything towards the end uh yeah it just it, it feels the tone feels different so it was nice to, to like not just have that kind of like grungy overdrive or distortion for the entirety of this album so it's nice that they did change it up their sound is changing a little bit with this one so that's really good um the extended outro was likely not needed too much that got a little tiresome before too long but it didn't harm the score so that's the important part okay so the last three points you made i are the last three points i made so i'm just going to extend those oh yeah um, like an extended outro yeah yeah um i did mention catchy chorus very catchy Um, It is definitely radio friendly. And although they're seen as a quote grunge band, even on their second album, they can transcend that label. And the ending has this Middle Eastern sort of vibe. And although it's not bad, I wonder why they ended the song with it. Yeah, it's just like they didn't know if they were supposed to go into one more course. And so they're just kind of like keeping it going. It's like, are we going to pick back up? And then, then the producer's like, no, no, cut, cut, cut. Yeah, and so it's like, banging okay. on the window. They're like, stop it. <laughs> Turn it down. Yeah, you guys, yeah. the song was supposed to end a minute ago. It's like, oh, gee, okay, sorry, sorry. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, again, didn't harm the score, but it just, yeah, it didn't really feel entirely necessary at the end. Yeah, I agree. I just realized I haven't been uh, marking down. Oh. Uh, hold on. I'm going to do some catch up here. There's Go, there's Animal, and we are on Daughter, daughter. right now. Where did I have Daughter? Uh, hmm. Maybe, maybe not. It's hard to say. Anyways, we'll get there when we get there, I guess. Yes. That's another thing I say a lot. And then we're then we're gonna have zero matches again. Oh, we're so confident for Oasis, and then everything oh got ruined. My God. All right, number four, Glorify G. Woo. Even uh, and, and for those of you who are a little too trigger happy, that means Glorified Gun. That's definitely what the gun uh, the song alludes to. Uh, uh, you said gun. Now, on the original album, is it called Glorified Gun, or is that just Spotify that decided to get rid of the word gun? I think it's Glorified G altogether. Is it okay? Yeah. So yeah. they just maybe didn't want to cause trouble back then and just kind of leave it to your imagination. Yeah, because it. Well, I don't know. First thing I think of is God, but that's also. Because I've heard the Nine Inch Nails capital G. Ah, uh, yes. So, kind of the letter G together. just seems to be a big thing in music, isn't it? Yeah. Or as Marilyn Manson has the song Guns, God, and Government, that's like a lot of themes and a lot of music. So, yeah. Oh, shit. Yep. As much as I like that album, I just don't ever want to talk about him because he's a piece of shit. Alrighty then, Glorified G. Let's keep talking about this song, though. Um, I would say that the verse stands out a hell of a lot more in this track as compared to the the chorus, which is interesting to say because, like, as I said, like, I think it was Animal, for for example, like, there was a role reversal in intensity where the verse was more intense, chorus is less intense. So you think you would tend to like the verses more, Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I... for animal it was fine but this one the verses stood out a lot more the courses i don't know it was pretty weak to me the like like 
underwhelmingly weak, not just one of those things where it's like, oh, it's building back up into something. It just, I don't know. I wasn't digging it. Um, I hear the lyrics and I understand it all. I understand what it's trying to say, although we don't do a lyrical analysis or breakdown. I think that's the first time we said that like in season three so far. Yeah. We don't do that in case you are new here. Yeah, we don't do lyrics. And I know that Eddie Vedder writes like storybook type lyrics here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I understand the lyrics, but just... I feel like they could have done something a little more impactful with it, especially with the message of the song. And I'm looking at the webcam. I notice my tongue is blue because of my Gatorade. <laughs> Sorry, it's just distracting me here. <laughs> um, great work, uh, guitar t- work and tones overall in this track, though. So that's good. It's a pretty standard Pearl Jam fair type of track. So like nothing to stand out. Yeah. Uh, the outro is a little weird. I do like it, but it felt like, you know, it felt like quite the extended outro for a song that was only just under three and a half minutes. Like this is the kind of outro you would expect on a five minute track, but like they Mm -hmm. did it in under three and a half minutes. So just, I don't know. Everything about the song felt a little strange to me, not terrible, but not super great either. All right. The main riff slash chords notes, they seem off and like, uncomfortable to me I don't know if it's minor major up or down no idea but it just makes me feel kind of weird um although I have I have always found this song interesting because of that I think it's just sort of like a wonky sort of sound um there doesn't seem to be many parts of the song the verses I I kind of looked at the lyrics and her like listening to it it kind of feels like it's like two verse lines two chorus lines music and then that's it there's no real anything it just feels like i don't know it's like biting into jello like it looks solid but as soon as you bite into it I, i'm getting nothing from this right now um uh i'm not sure that i liked that it did end with a solo and then sort of rung out it seemed like they were like yeah that's that's all we have to say slap more music on was like okay that's it um, I felt like it was a lot shorter than it actually was only because I, I don't know, there, there wasn't a story to follow, to kind of imagine in your head. It was just sort of, I don't know, someone yelling lines at you and then you're done. I don't know. That's the Eddie Vedder way of doing things. Yeah. I, I say, I don't know, but like I wrote down the notes. Clearly I know. <laughs> But I guess you're kind of thinking of it, thinking of it on the go. It just maybe yeah. it made a little less sense. I don't know. Yeah, like I, I like the song. I would listen to it again. I would choose it out of a playlist. See, I but wouldn't. when you're when you're listening to it critically, it sometimes is a shame that it you're listening to it as a passive listener, and you're like, yeah, this is fine. I'll listen to this again. But when you're really listening to it, you're like, this really isn't gift like it's not telling me much you know it's kind of like doing a lyric like a musical analysis and like Britney Spears like you'll listen to it on you know adult radio like in the background at the office whatever but when you really listen to it you're like this is I don't like this <laughs> this is nothing that's, really. that's essentially like how I kind of feel about the song overall though yeah it's I mean stressful. I wouldn't pick this one to listen to out of like a pile of pearl gem songs again it's not terrible but just mm, there's nothing really to go with in this one that's the problem yeah i think lyrically it suffers for sure i don't know about lyrically the the lyrics seem more important than the actual music so maybe 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 like um like the uh i I don't know what to call it uh the way that the lyrics are laid out yeah. You know, maybe they could have just, he could have added a little, little bit more to the verse, maybe fleshed out a chorus, not the chorus, but a chorus somewhere. I don't know. You know what? Fuck it. Change the whole song. Change everything. There you go. Yeah. Make the chorus a lot more catchier and also make it better too. Cause again, the chorus was yeah. super weak. Yeah. Exactly. Go back, re- remaster the remaster, redo it all, throw it in the garbage. Just re yeah, re record the entire album. Why not? <laughs> Minus a few tracks. <laughs> Yes. Alrighty then. So song number five, don't have to re-record this one. It's fine the way it is. Dissident. Uh, I thought this one had like a great opening. I have always liked this even when it starts on the radio. So it's very memorable to me. Um, I like how all three string instruments are kind of like doing their own thing in the intro as well. You have one kind of like doing a, a like a, a solo lead, one's doing the rhythm, and then the bass is kind of like harmonizing a little bit with the rhythm. So it just yeah. everything works. I really like that. 
Uh, super memorable composition, as I said, throughout the entire track, so I really like it. It's just too bad that the hook isn't as singable as the others. Uh, not that it's not catchy, but it's not. This doesn't feel as singable as it probably could be, as compared to like you know, Animal, for example. Yeah, it's going by other songs on this album, like even Go had like a kind of a catchy chorus too that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, the song is pretty much like the perfect length for what it needs to do. I mean, it's like three minutes and thirty six seconds. Uh, it's the perfect use of that three and a half minutes. It got its ideas out, had fun with it. It's just well written, a great song all around. Didn't have a whole lot to say for it, but just because I just I was enjoying it too much to write too many notes. But that's generally the feelings I have about it. I definitely make notes um, that I notice the two guitars mixed on different sides and that they're playing contrasting riffs, but they're complementary. I like that a lot, like you did. Um, I do feel like I kind of missed a part of the song having it start so immediately. I feel like I may have missed two bars of it starting, but like, I guess that kind of is what makes it memorable that it just kicks in, starts right away. I always thought the song was a lot longer than it is. I don't know if I have been confusing this song with a different one, but uh, I'm very pleased when I listened to it this time. I was like, oh, I actually like this a lot more than I thought that I did when I heard it before. Um, Definitely a lot of choruses, they really try and drive that hook in where it's just, you didn't hear it the first time? Well, maybe I'll hear it the eighth time. So they keep on going. Um, The wailing guitar that makes up the main riff, it kind of seems desperate. Um, It sort of has that sort of, I don't know, longing feel to it. And I kind of like that. Um, And yeah, I always kind of think of this song and daughter and I think a couple other ones of their more, I guess, quote, slower songs when really in reality, they're not, they're just not as high energy as say go or animal. But um, yeah, I, I like this one. I have a newfound appreciation for it, I guess, than I did before, but there are a couple on here that uh, I, I like a little more than this one. Fair enough on that one, yeah. Um, but yeah, you were mentioning about the guitar there. It's like, yeah, it's, it's probably the, one of the more bluesier things they do on this album, for sure. Yeah. Like, that's what that guitar felt like to me. I like that. Yeah, not bad at all. Alrighty then, we're at the pretty much the halfway point of the album now. Uh, I, I I don't know if this actually stands for anything. Song number six, WMA. Do you know if it stands for anything? White Male American. White Male American. I am tur- I'm two out of three of those things. And it turns out that uh, that they do say it in the song. So, okay, so we can kind of clarify that. Typical Eddie Vedder never would have known if you didn't look it up. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He probably said it like twenty thousand times in the song, but we just it just came out as her returned. Yes, (laughs) typical Eddie. Yeah, what a guy. All right, what do you got? Um, I really like the drums uh, at the beginning of this. I would honestly. I would love to just hear this whole song is just a solely percussive song. Just like something about that was just sort of new sounding. Um, I like that a lot. I feel like this song was a good idea to experiment with. It's just not really something that I'm really into. I don't know. It. I don't know if hollow is the right word only because after looking up what the uh, the song title means, you kind of get an idea of what the song is about. And it's definitely not hollow at all. Well, I guess the, the topic matter is not hollow. But anyways, yeah. point is, the sound to me kind of didn't feel very, um, I don't know, substantial? I don't know. I feel like I'm really just digging myself in a hole here. Ugh. Please don't <laughs> throw stones at me. <laughs> You need, I'll give you all the thesauruses and encyclopedias you need to oh really uh, word this all better if you really need Oh my it. God, yes, because all the words I'm using, I'm just like, oh my God, all the comments I'm going to get, I'm so sorry. Does this um, make sense? <laughs> but I did, the note after after saying that really just said, still like the drums though, so I mean, <laughs> validation. Uh, then I'll, I'll try to tag on that then instead yeah, of using please. too many words. Uh, yeah, I did say myself. that, yeah, there was cool work with like the bass guitar and tom drums to start everything off. It's something a little different to check out on the album. And I wrote that note knowing, not knowing that that was pretty much the entire song. Mm-hmm. So 
it was both a problem and not a problem, I guess. It was a problem only because the song is nearly six minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, it didn't change up too much. And that, so that's kind of the issue. That's kind of where I was going with it. Felt It didn't feel like it gave me it lacked a substance. Lot. Yes, that's there it. Yes. There's words to use. Sub- substance or sub... It's not like a combination of sub- substance and abstinence or subsistence. Subs- yeah, I, I substance words that we, yeah. we said we are not professional music reviewers, so you cannot not, hold it against us. We're not professional human beings. If uh, we, yeah. if we can't even speak, then no. <laughs> um, the song did have like a really great flow to it, though, overall. So that has that going for it, mm-hmm. uh, especially because like, you know, it didn't really rely on that standard rock style of drumming. So, again, it gives you something new to kind of like listen to and check out. And I mean, the guitars add some cool layering in the song too, so that's appreciated. But again, the biggest problem is just it all starts to blend after a while. Like, yes. Everything is just kind of stretched out, kind of thin. And I mean, like, even the layerings can't really save the song at, at, after a certain point. It sounds this would be a good three to four minute track, but being six minutes, you kind of get tired after a while. I'm not going to downplay the lyrics of the song, but just the music overall is just like, should it be six minutes? The answer is no. Yes. Um, definitely going to parrot everything you just said. I also found it kind of hard to grasp anything, which made it feel a lot longer than it really was. And it like was still said, pretty long. It was already six minutes. Um, perhaps it will become one of these ones that will grow on me. Time will tell. But uh, if doing Honestly, like aside from this song in particular, if doing these reviews have really given me anything, it's the understanding of putting together track, like a track order for a vinyl record, because this song just screams in my face. End of side one. Yes, exactly. All it is, is we're coming down and all I can think is the next song is going to be fast, whether I have heard it before or or not. It's just that is how it goes. And with this song in particular, it really just capped off the I'm seeing this. I'm understanding this. So I, I'm glad that that uh, I got that out of this. But that was also with the song aside so i'm actually done talking about the song itself <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of bands will do that too like they'll curate the uh the track list very carefully because you can write songs like in any order just because yeah. you know go may have very well not been the first song written for this album you know and like mm-hmm. you know uh indifference might not have been the last song written for the album uh, so curating it to go in some sort of flow is important for the most part not every band has to do it not every album has to be that way like it could just be a random assortment of songs but like i feel like with pearl jam they kind of have to because of the way especially like you know eddie's lyrics and just the mood of the songs and everything like that i I feel like just it works better curated so yeah the fact that this is like end of side a works well and i can understand that it's just it's too bad that they feel like oh we have to fill six minutes so let's just like do the same damn thing for six minutes we're paying. We're paying for the space. We gotta fill it. Yeah, we're 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 paying by like the individual groove, like the, the one <laughs> groove ring on a on a vinyl. They're paying yeah. like two cents for every single like groove oh, ring. Oh god, yeah. And then the the producer is knocking on the window, telling him to go longer. So opposite the last time. Yeah, you gotta get right down to the center of that vinyl where it starts doing the looping, skipping thing, and then the needle lifts. You gotta go all the way to the very end, as far as it'll let you. That's it. Yep, yep. And they did. And they did. Please flip over to side B. So I guess that's what we'll do now, then. And yes. uh, y- you mentioned uh, when you flip over to side B, you expect something a little louder and everything like that. Well, I mean, we more or less got that song number yeah. seven, Blood. Uh, hell of a title to start it, too. Yeah. Uh, it was quite the intense performance for Mr. Vetter here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, just, I think aside from one sentence, the entire thing is screamed, which I like. And it's like not just screaming, like he is belting, like he is yeah. just going. And like, I think the the interesting part about him doing that, though, is the juxtaposition between his screaming and like the generally softer instrumentals. So it's not like he's screaming. It's it's not like, you know, again, animal or anything like that, where it's like intense instrumentals and you can like scream on top of it if you want to. Like yeah. gentle, softer instrumentals with like this loud screaming. So just an interesting pairing. I'll say that much. I think I thought it was still pretty cool. 
Um, and there's also like smaller funkier portions of the song too, yeah. which I, I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, it still has like this fairly kind of rock slash punk type feel to it, just because of like how loud, repetitive, and aggressive it is. Yeah. The re- repetitiveness doesn't bother me too much though. It's only two minutes and 50 seconds. So I will not complain about that. You, you, you did it in a short amount of time. I can deal with it. And yeah, I was just saying that um, I do, damn, I do really love that raw, long, drawn out scream in the middle of the track. Good stuff, Eddie. I really appreciate when I'm listening to your review and I'm just looking down at my notes going, yeah, yeah, yeah I definitely yeah. accidentally <laughs> sent him a list or um, a copy of my, my notes. That's the secret. I don't even write oh, yeah. my own notes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, you should pay me then. Um, so I like, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Got to start this again. Cool. So when the song started, I I don't want to say I was confused, but I was intrigued by the way that everything was sort of fitting together. So I counted it out. The intro has the guitar three, four for eight bars. It has the drums for four, four for six bars. So every 24 beats, they match up. And then that's when the vocals come in. Because That's the I was most like, music theory thing you've ever said on this right? show. Like the most, right? I didn't even pay attention. So the fact that yeah. you're pointing out that note freaks me out a little bit. Now you're right? reading my notes. Yeah. Okay. Right. I had to listen to it like six times to get it. No, I'm, I'm going to have to listen to it too, just to hear this because I didn't, yeah. I wasn't paying attention. Oh yeah. Well, because I'm listening to it and I'm like, I, I'm nodding my head, but I was nodding it off beat. And I was like, okay, this is weird. So I'm counting the guitar and then I'm counting the drums. I'm like, okay, this is strange. And then I'm counting the guitar a couple times, drums a couple times. I was very pleased. I really liked that. I found it incredibly audibly interesting and mo- kind of more than the first half of the album, only because they did something like literally different. Yeah. Um, Definitely noted the funky, groovy guitar between the main riffs. I like that a lot. And like you said, it has a punk feel, but I felt it was very well crafted. I don't want to say it was more polished, but in reality, it was. <laughs> it was like a more mature punk, yeah. if, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it it had the sound, but less attitude. Exactly. Like Yeah, it had the experience, but it didn't have the edginess. Yes. Yes. Calm down a little. So, yeah, I, I really like this one. I feel like I've heard it before. I, like I've heard the whole album. It wasn't uh, a standout track to me at the time, but listening to it now, like, ooh, I like it a lot. I owned this CD in the 2000s. Maybe only listened to it like two or three times. Really? <laughs> I was such a dick that I owned this and like, I think... I listened for songs like Animal and then yeah. like, you know, Daughter because that was popular too. And I don't know, just because I, I was young and my like with allowance or like even with my like first job, I didn't have any like financial responsibility so I could spend money on whatever I wanted. Yeah. But those were the days. Um, so yeah, I remember just like, oh yeah, I like this is pretty cool. So then I bought the album and I don't even think I listened to the entire thing. So I don't Dang. recall this song even a little bit. Really? I like it, but I mean, yeah, like I just, I don't really remember much about it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of nice to go into songs like that with no preconceived notions that it's just brand new and fresh. So, yeah. Yeah, So it it is nice, especially when it's kind of a surprise too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll move on to song number eight, the one you thought was a single, which I'm, I'm sure it is somewhere in the world. Yeah. There is no way that it, that is wild that it wasn't a released single. The title of their greatest hits album from the 2000s, Rear View Mirror, double album. Yeah. I, it, I, I think that was the second Pearl Jam album I ever bought because it's like, yeah. oh, it's just like a, a huge collection of all their best songs. Why not? And also yeah. it has one of my favorite Pearl Jam songs on it, I Got ID, which yeah. like I think is like the B-side to another album or something like that. Like it, it's not even like on a main album. So the fact that I, you can only hear it there was like, hey, this is pretty special. Yeah, yeah. Dang, I'm still so baffled that this was not a single. Like, out of the many Pearl Jam songs that I've heard on the radio, I've heard this one just as much. Well, maybe maybe Alive and Jeremy a little more, but mm-hmm. holy crap. 
that is just See, I, I, wild. I don't recall hearing this one too many times on the radio though so like yeah. i thought it was just maybe one of those like special occasion tracks they pull out and maybe that is yeah. the case yeah but i mean if, if you say you've heard it more than i have then i mean like who what what's my word right interesting maybe, maybe it was just the uh the city i grew up in because they also played the eagles victim of love a lot more than they played uh any other eagle song except for hotel california so who knows maybe maybe there was a fan in the radio station that i got to listen to uh their curated music list well i also noticed that in the 90s and 2000s on radio yet you can get away with playing like the hidden gems or the side b's and everything like that yeah. a lot more often but nowadays it seems so strict and i can say that yeah. confidently having graduated a radio program at a college how just yeah. like pds are far more strict with what you play on the radio now so it's like it's very it's interesting that you used to be able to get away with stuff like that, but now you have to like follow to a T. Yeah, that's that's just wild. That's just wild to me. It is. Any, yeah. Anyways, anyways, I've always liked this song. Uh, maybe that's why I'm just so baffled. Um, I love the main riff like a lot. There's just, I don't know if it's the cycling sort of sound of the small little uh little bit that just keeps going keeps chugging along um i really like that the guitars are doing the same thing but one is heavily distorted and one of them is clean so you kind of get that uh that contrast that yeah. they are they tend to do and they tend to be mixed one in each ear so i feel like i'm sort of standing there you know the only one in the auditorium watching them play just kind of cool um, and I like that there are a few parts in the song where they kept in some like some obvious guitar string slides as you're going from one chord to another one position to another. And it really adds to that appreciation of the imperfections because yeah, they didn't yeah. like make them do it again, edit it out. It's just there. It's out front, not hidden. I really like that. I appreciate that. There, there is kind of a term for that, especially if it makes a lot of noise. It's called a scrape. So, like, you can hear the scrape on a string when they slide that's up or what, down. That's what it was. Yeah, I like when certain songs and can do that and like pull it off because sometimes it's distracting. But then, depending on the song or just the style, mm -hmm. it fits and is part of it. Like um, a long time ago, like even recording my own music, I had someone record a bass line for me and the first take had a scrape in it and I didn't mind it so much, but he felt very insistent on uh, re-recording it clean. And so I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Then I kind of like had both versions. I was like, I kind of want to put it in the scrape, but I guess for this particular style track, I won't leave it in, but I really wanted it to originally. So I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, that's my own music. <laughs> that was also like a <laughs> link, link in the bio. <laughs> oh fuck. No, no one's ever going to hear that. It's not frail state. <laughs> Also, that's all I'll say about that, because <laughs> also I have to talk about Rearview Mirror. Yes. Uh, I felt this was a fairly generic kind of like rock track, too. Like at first, when I op that opening riff started, I thought I was listening to the Tragically Hip. Really? I don't know. It just it sounds like that, something that'd be like on like, you know, fully completely or Road Apples or something. It just like there's something about the riff that just felt very like generic in that style. That's not to rip on the Tragically Hip. I'm just saying like, you know, they're kind of generic in their own way. Yes. Um. It started to feel a little more exciting and interesting once it got past the verses, because I think the verses are the part that kind of drew me away from this song. Yeah. Just wasn't feeling it too much. I did have a good energy overall, though. I could, I will say that, and like good guitar work all around, so there's that much I can give to it. It's not super exciting, but it's, I mean, it's not exactly boring either, I guess. Mm hmm it's not really a memorable track though. Like, I don't know that it's just, it, this one is another one that didn't hit me all that well, although I am familiar with it because of the greatest hits. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's good enough for when it's on, I wouldn't necessarily change it, but I wouldn't put it on a playlist. Let's just say that much. This is definitely a track that I would choose to listen to. Um, everything in this song I feel is complementary to the main riff. Uh, to the guitars playing it in a higher octave, to the bass pulling it along during, or pulling the riff along during the end of the song. Um, I really like the drums increasing in intensity near the end of the song. It all kind of comes to a head and then it just sort of explodes, I guess. You can hear the drumsticks being put down and then yeah, the I heard cars that, yeah. ending. I thought that was really interesting. It definitely adds to that whole 
you know, we're doing this in one take. And if you don't like it, that's it. We're done. That kind of feel. So I don't know. I always had a have a soft spot in my my heart and my ears for for this track. I'm glad yes. it's on this album. I get to listen to it. Maybe it's very it's very well like one of those albums that like where all the instrumentals were recorded in one room and then like the vocals were recorded separately type thing. Yeah. Like a very uh, blood sugar sex magic type thing to do. Uh, but actually on the note of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, let's go on to song number nine, Rats. Uh, the reason why I bring up Red Hot Chili Peppers yeah, because I, like, I said, feels like they listened to a little too much Red Hot Chili Peppers coming into this particular track because, my God, this sounds like early 90s Chili Peppers. Really? Like, just, I don't know. It was way, like, the, you had this, like, cool, funky bass line that kind of goes to the verses. I'm like, okay, that's a very flea thing to do there. Yeah. Not necessarily pop slap, but, you know, it's still there. And just, I don't know, everything that was happening with the guitars and drums just, but I think the part that really got me too was like this the gravelly low mumbling of Eddie Vedder. Yeah. Did <laughs> you song. not think that sounded like Dave Matthews? <laughs> no. And also I'm not oh. like I know who he is, but I'm also not entirely familiar oh, with Dave God. Matthews' voice. Oh, that's that's where that's what I got from that. I just imagined sure. uh, Anthony Kiedis doing that. So I mean like Yeah. I feel like they, this album, like going into this, they listened to Blood Sugar Sex Magic and like, hey, you know what? This is going to be kind of influential in our next record. And it really came out in this one. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Um, the second half of this track, though, I wasn't super huge in the first half. The second half picked up a lot more for me, I guess. Um, you know, it was a much more straightforward composition, but I mean, it works well as a pickup from the funkier first half. So I like how there's just a balance of the song where you get this, but then you get this. So it's not just the same thing all the way through mm -hmm. and both parts kind of do what they need to. So I thought that was great. Uh, my biggest gripe of the song is literally the last minute, though, as much as I like it, it starts fading as everything is happening and it fades for one solid minute. I actually I went back and ch uh, like started listening for the exact point the volume started to drop. And it was it was the song is three minutes and 16. It was a two minute. Sorry. No, sorry. Four minute and 15 second. It was three minutes and 15 that the volume slowly started to fade. I'm just like, the song's still happening, boys. What are you doing? Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna insert this. Was it just me or was it trying to fade out but just wouldn't? I kept hearing the volume lower and then plateau until it finally ended. I wasn't sure if that was just me or my headphones. I listened to it going, the fuck is this? I didn't like that very much. It was very awkward. Because there was still a lot of energy going on in that yeah. part too. And it, to, at least for me, it was the more enjoyable part of the track. So it's like you're taking this from me. What are you doing? Yeah. Don't siphon back. this shit. Just give me the shit back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't like that either. Ugh. Yeah. Not entirely fond of it, but what do you have to think about rats aside from the ending? Um, first note, capital letters, face. <laughs> um, I, I did, I don't generally mind tambourine, but I didn't really like it over the solo. I, think that was the only place that it was but maybe if it was put over the chorus or like that musical bridge that came closer to the end of the song it would have been better over that solo it feels like it feels like someone was like oh yeah you get a solo and then just tried to drown them out didn't like that very much hey anybody um, needs something to do oh my god well he can hang from the ceiling and drink wine oh yeah um the uh, the breathy vocals, the breathy deep vocals only lasted for two verses and didn't come back. So I wasn't really sure what the point was. I don't, there was no callback to it. No, and it didn't anything. sound very good. Yeah, it was really weird. Definitely reminded me of Dave Matthews. It, the only uh, frame of reference that uh, that I had come to. And uh, I feel like this one has potential. Well, had potential, I guess. Um, but it wasn't sure what it was as it went on because it like it had me at the beginning and then it kind of felt like it turned into a different song, but close enough to the beginning that they were like, yeah, we're just going to package this all together. You know, it's like it's like something being, I guess, light red and dark pink. When you really look at it, they're different. But to the untrained eye, that's just the same. Put them together, whatever, ship it out. Yeah, so, eh, it's. It's eh, eh. really all I got to say about it. Eh. I again, my thoughts more or less. I do like the second half of the track. So, uh, second half of the track, though. So, at the very least, uh, it had that going for it. 
Yeah, yeah. But there's still like a lot I like to appreciate about it. I, I, I know I'm kind of picking on it for sounding like the Chili Peppers or at least in my eyes it does or ears I should say. Uh, but you, you know what? Obviously, we, we've done Blood Sugar Sex Magic. We all know how I felt about that album versus you versus. Ha ha. There you go. I didn't even mean to, <laughs> I didn't mean to make that pun at all. It just works. Yeah. But the idea is, I mean, I, I don't hate the song. Don't super love it. But it does remind me of an album I really like. So that's going to be worth something. Yeah, it's a little more endearing in your eyes, ears. And 100% soul. or at least 75. Yes. Regards. I don't do anything 100%. <laughs> And on, on that sad note, we can move on to the other song that we thought was a single, but apparently isn't, even though it's on the radio all the time. Oh, Number 10, yeah. Elderly Woman Behind the Counter in a Small Town. Like, if I don't look at it while reading it, I'm going to stumble on that because it's yeah. just a very long title. I I remember it, but it's it's always one of those, why did they name it that? I seem to recognize your face. <laughs> apparently, uh, yeah. like... Eddie Vedder stayed in this small outhouse looking room like behind the house they were recording in and he brought like a like a little amp out there so I'm trying to remember this exactly and he brought like a microphone thing and a guitar slept out there and woke up the next day and just started playing these chords and kind of singing that and then I think it was uh, McCready or something who was like reading the paper outside was like hey I really like that and they rec- then they recorded it like super quick interesting so apparently there's not a lot of effort that went into this song <laughs> Dang. Well, it's one of their more known songs from this era. That and so. also another one of those very user friendly songs, too. I oh, feel like, totally. like, no matter what style of rock you like, chances are this one's like kind of like Daughter will end up somewhere in the mix. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's another really kind of great acoustic track as well. Uh, it's it kind of properly levels out that energy that the album has been more or less giving us up to this point. So it's just nice to have these like calm down moments. Yeah. Uh, it's a memorable and gentle hook, too. A heart and thoughts, they fade, fade away. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, as I said, user-friendly kind of track. So, like, it just, it works like that. His vocals are very gentle. It's just funny that a few tracks go in blood. Like, it was the most belting thing he was doing. And I think this happened, like, at least once in 10 as well, where, like, what was it, like, Porch or something, where he was just going for it and vocally. And then there's other songs that were like super quiet. Mm-hmm. So it's, just, it's so interesting to hear this dynamic constantly come out in these albums and everything like that. And I know next time, next year, when we do another Pearl Jam album, it's gonna, I'm going to make the exact same comment and probably refer back to this video again. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I still like when he does it though. I think it's great. And my last note is just looking at the liner notes. It says upright bass in this song. So I'm assuming that's what it is. It sounds like a fretless regardless and upright basses are fretless. Yeah. If that's indeed, that's what it is. A great use of it. It really fits the atmosphere like a lot more than just using a, a regular bass guitar. So, hey, kudos to that. I think this song is a very Eddie Vedder solo album-esque song. Um, Again, showing us the direction the band and even Eddie himself would be going into in the future. This is one of those takeoff albums. Knowing what we know now about Pearl Jam's musical trajectory, this song is pretty ahead of its time. Definitely agree. Um, I don't I don't think there is really a real traditional song structure here, but I do really like the melody. Um, there's something oddly satisfying for me about this song. I don't know if it's the constant vocals through the whole song and no real sort of rest, <laughs> um, or if it's the wandering electric guitar behind the acoustic. I really like that marriage of the acoustic and the electric guitars. And I, I know I've mentioned that not only earlier in this show or this episode, but many beforehand. It's just, it's, it's really nice and complimentary. And I think that this is the perfect time on the album for this song. Especially considering we're in like the last few tracks. Yeah. Like if this was earlier, I I just, it would feel kind of, you know, definitely pumping the brakes. So having it a lot closer to the end, I think was a really good idea and a really good move. And that's why it was good that like daughter was where it was because I mean, like it was an acoustic track, but at the same time, again, it was definitely much more lively than this one. Not that this one isn't lively, but it's comparing the two daughters, like much more. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, That one still has a pulse. Yeah. And so like, (laughs) so this one works out really well where it is too. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, Generally enjoyable track. Yeah. I like Eddie's like lower register really suits because you can tell he has like a bit of a deeper voice too. So that, that definitely helps. And yeah, like, we already talked about like we could see where Pearl Jam was going after this album. Like it's just 100%. interesting how this album was like the prototype 
to like what we could expect later on. Maybe we'll have to do an Eddie Vedder album one day. I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever listened fully to one of his solo albums, but obviously I've heard plenty of songs. I've heard Big Hard Sun, which the, is a Indo. cover, and that's the only like actual Eddie Vedder solo song I've heard. I've never heard anything off of any other album. So is, brand uh, new I, to I think me. one of my new music reviews, I did one of his most recent tracks of his recent oh. album, but I don't remember anything about it at this point. Yeah, yeah. We gotta listen to an album sometime. Yeah. Eventually. All right. Song number eleven, Leash. Another like really like the last of the more kind of intense tracks, I guess. Even though Mm -hmm. like I don't know, this one kind of feels despite the lyrics, although I mean even the lyrics, this song feels like a little more uplifting in a way. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it just feels like a more, like, encouraging type track, just uh, because of the way, like, especially the chorus goes, and then the lyrics, like, just how often he's like, oh, I don't even remember what the exact words were, but, like, get this fucking leash off me or something like that, and he says that, like, mm-hmm. 20 times, or something along the lines of that. Oh, no, yeah. uh, get out of my fucking face is what he says a bunch of times. Yeah. She's us. Um, the song did kind of feel like um, rehashing some of the older songs, but it still managed to make it sound pretty interesting especially again going into those courses and everything like that mm-hmm. um yes as i said it still feels pretty encouraging as it progresses like it feels like a high spirit feeling and it's like the, the lyrics feel really rebellious too so i guess that's what adds to the feeling aside from just the instrumentals mm-hmm. but yeah all i was wrote was a uh, so many f-bombs such angry young men <laughs> oh my god yes. i think this is the most use of the word fuck i've ever heard in any pearl jam song i haven't heard all pearl jam songs but so yeah. far this one is it i i think so um i i didn't really take a liking to the song spoiler we're close to the end anyways um i don't know if this song would have sounded better elsewhere or like somewhere else on the album uh like i I didn't really want to be pulled into a heavier track again after the last one, at least like this sort of heavy, maybe something like, I don't know. I don't really know where I would have put this song, but I may have wanted to take it off the album and maybe release it as like an unreleased, maybe B side, something like that. Like I got ID, and like that, yeah. that song should have been on this album and then this yeah. song should have been like its own thing. Cause like I, I was thinking about it and I, I listened to these songs in, in the order I was thinking of. And if anything, I'd have taken this song off. I would have put rats after elderly woman and then had indifference. So I would have oh, just switched, switched the last two and then have the end. I don't know. Pleasing to me, at least. Um, Hard disagree. <laughs> if that, if wow, as if we haven't based the entire show premise on that. One whole year later. Cool. Um, if this song made the album, I am curious to know what didn't. Um, and it sort of feels like go or animal but it gives a different vibe that i'm not really sure i would have included on the album i mean i'm saying it as if i'm curating an album that's what 30 years old already if there yeah ish. um but yeah i i honestly don't really have much else to say on this one uh it didn't really offer me too much uh that i hadn't heard earlier in the album aside from the word fuck so I definitely <laughs> mentioned that as well. And actually, the last note I have about the song has to do with the use of the word fuck. Uh, I'll read it verbatim, too. Something about Eddie gently saying, get the fuck out, get out of my fucking face at certain points kind of made me chuckle. Like, he would usually yell it, but then every once in a while he said, like, get out of my fucking face. Like, he would just say it like, really <laughs> soft. It made me chuckle. It's, it's like he wore himself out from screaming it before and then started dozing off while still it's, rebelling. It's like, it's, like, it's like a child crying and then they fall asleep. Yeah, it's like you're not yeah. done yelling at the person you're talking to but you're also dozing off so like it's getting like you know, yeah fuck getting you. exhausted Just, <laughs> yeah what the fuck are you even <laughs> Just like yeah. trail off goodbye yeah i can see that <laughs> i don't know I, I guess i like the song more than you but at the same time yes. like i see where you're coming from with it definitely yeah. wouldn't put rats here though this actually that probably would have scored it lower for me because it's like what the fuck is this song between the last two like gentle songs of the album yeah I like that's why I said like the song I got idea I'm gonna bring that up again because this, I think that's the perfect 
song for this point where it's like not too heavy has a bit of a pulse to it but it's yeah there's not like super intensity to it but it's still fun so i don't know i would have put that one there yeah they make weird choices with like the b-sides because like even yellow lead better i thought was on this album it's a b-side to jeremy's single really and so it's just like are, are you fucking nuts it's like one of the most it's it's if you're a Pearl Jam fan, it's one of the most iconic songs yeah. they have. And it's like the, it's the show closer every single time. Yeah. And so, like, how did that not make the album? But then other songs in that album did. Holy so, shit. So like they make really weird that. choices with like, you know, what goes on a B side versus what just stands alone. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So yellow led better or I, I got ID could have been on this album. It would have been fine. Dang. And it's wild because I definitely recognize the the title. I got ID. I've definitely a million times heard yellow led better, had no idea where they sat on albums, on B sides, anything like that. Cause I've only heard them as singles. Yeah. So you appreciate them at, well, I guess not really uh, released singles but just singles in general and uh yeah i i've never that's what that's surprising like, and i'm hoping that's 100 percent correct too because like again this is coming from wikipedia and like so i was looking at the track list and like yellow led better on this what is it on the next album and then so i look up that song specifically and it says the b-side to the jeremy single and that's i was just like fucking weird obviously it would appear in rearview mirror like yeah like a decade later but the idea was like as far as i can tell it was not on a mainstream album god like damn that's album. man i feel like this band is going to surprise me the most when it comes to stuff like that like they have all of these songs that are out there's such a vast fan i guess fan uh base that will trade and re- like you know play these songs and request them and stuff that you think that they're just normal record label releases when they're not at all and you're like holy shit like man your your fans must be requesting these or wanting them or trading them or you are just like you know what you deserve all of the music we've released here's everything and get it out there so just drop it one way or another, but then just don't yeah. release a music video again for like another two decades. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Their last one was what, early 2000s? Uh, the last one I remember I would so. have been uh, Do the Evolution. Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. That's no, like 98, uh, th- th- 99. There could have been one after that, but the thing is, that's the last one I remember. And that looked like an expensive video because, I mean, hiring Todd uh-huh. McFarlane to fucking animate for you probably wasn't cheap. Dang, and that was yeah, that was off yield. So it was Which like, like ninety seven nineties. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. So yeah, they said fuck that. But sure. anyways, we are on to the last song now. No, song number twelve, indifference. Hmm. I didn't have much for this one. It was a. It's a five minute long song, but it didn't. It wasn't very different. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it was sort of the same thing. Not to say it was bad or anything. Um, the intro sort of quiet sounds with the tambourine really gives me the feeling of wandering into a cave with the echoey dripping water. And it's just sort of, I don't know, creepy in a way, or it kind of put me at an unease, but in a way like a, like a thriller movie would where it puts you at unease, but you, you're, you're still there. You're not going anywhere. They've got you from the beginning um i i found it sounded more like a sort of soundscape song as it's really simple and quiet uh i like the slowly zooming synths and the uh quiet symbols uh i could and would fall asleep to this and i have a feeling you probably already did i i didn't actually but i will i will put it on tonight now, now now that you don't have to review it now you can actually do it exactly drift off into wonderland with, with this song with me like i i don't know how i feel about this one being an ender like i get like it's fine it's a quieter song and it makes sense but g- given everything this album has given to us so far yeah to go on this like such this soft kind of defeated note felt so strange not that like all the lyrics on this album have been like the brightest and happiest, but at the same time, I mean, like this one just especially like just feels very sad. Yeah. I mean, there's like a soft organ that like, you know, it's present throughout most of the track at the very least. Great use of it, especially like like closing out the album altogether. So it does have that going for it. Um, 
it is an emotionally draining song, as I said, like, cause you mean you have this like light as a feather instrumental. Then you have these like very defeated sounding lyrics. It's like, it kind of sounds very pessimistic again, not breaking it down, but like, that's kind of the vibe I was getting from what I was listening to. Yeah. So it doesn't really send you off on a high note. So you're done listening to this album. Like, Oh, <laughs> like there goes yeah. my mood. Yeah. Um, but even being in five minutes, like it didn't feel too long. Like maybe it was like the pacing of it. It's hard to say it worked though. And I mean, like, uh, the only other note I have, like the one thing I really liked about this track the most is like, uh, these harmonic guitars notes that were in there, like these kind of like Mm -hmm. high pitch notes. Maybe it's a bass harmonic too. Like that's very possible. Um, regardless, it works well as a very soft layer. So the song did have a lot of nice things going for, but like, I I don't know how I feel about it as an ender. And that's what, that's what was bothering me about it. Like, I don't know where else this could go, but like, I don't know if I would have ended, if I had the choice, I wouldn't have ended the album with this song. Yeah. Would you have just like added something after it or taken it off completely? I would have added something. Yeah. Like maybe like, I don't want to say make it a longer song and it doesn't, not that it has to explode in this big rock instrumental, whatever, but just like, give me something a little more lively. Like, I don't know. Cause the song isn't like a concept album. So it doesn't, it, I can compare it to year zero. Cause we've done that by nine inch nails where it's like the entire thing is a concept album first to last. And to the last song, it makes sense that it's like this very quiet, like sad end of album kind of song because it just matches the story. Whereas this album's not like coherent story. It's like several stories. Yeah. So the fact that the choice was made to end it on this note, just, I don't know. It felt weird to me. I can, I can understand that. But, you know, it is what it is. Still sounds good. Just, all, I, again, all I wish I had was a different placement. Yep. Yeah. Every, everyone has their, uh, their different preferences. Music is subjective if this show has not shown us that completely. Yeah, 47 episodes later, if you have not <laughs> learned a thing from us, first off, good for you. And, <laughs> and second off, I mean, I lost... I lost my point after point one because that was the only thing that mattered. <laughs> so with that said, me just rambling, that means we are at the end of talking about Pearl Jam's versus. It feels weird to come back full circle. We're not quite done yet, but I mean, uh-huh. hey, cool. We finally redid a Pearl Jam. And I think what this is only the second band at this point to have made a second appearance on the show. Yes, Mr. Bungle. Mr. Bungle. And now Pearl Jam, uh, we may have more down the road, but you'll have to wait and see about that. Because first, Mm -hmm. got to talk about more about this album at the very least, like with song rankings. So make sure before we get into song rankings that you let us know what you thought about this album too. Did you listen to it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you think of it? Please let us know down in the comments of wherever you're listening, audio, video, it don't matter. There's a comment section somewhere. Let us know. And even over on social media at Rate the Record Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all those things found at ratetherecord.ca. Yes, do all of the things. Let us know on every platform. Spam us, please. Yeah. Yes, it, it please. looks better than the algorithm. Please spam us. Please, please <laughs> comment on every video or every picture on Instagram. Promote it on blank records, please. Oh, we yeah, love the, that. the ones that as soon as they pop up, we I immediately that. hit block and restrict. Oh my god. Every Lord. time. Like that's every post. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when I know it goes live, I will open up Instagram because it's only on Instagram. Yeah. And I, like, I will wait and like within 30 seconds, it pops up. I go to the account, block it completely. And then it's like, it also gives you the option to block like any additional accounts this person yeah. makes. Yeah. But I mean, it's a bot. You're going to get tons of them regardless. They'll never stop. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you're listening to this and you want to comment on any of our social medias, put the word. Mm, mm, vinyl or just put a like a, a, a record emoji there's no record emoji shit i forgot about that that sucks really weird they have a cd but they don't have a record mm-hmm. like you damn rate kids the know cd <laughs> it doesn't have the night doesn't have rate the, the cassette yeah <laughs> <laughs> there you go that doesn't yeah that doesn't have a good ring to it yeah. either yeah but anyways, while you're thinking of words to put into our social medias and stuff like that, and also just promote it your damn self. Don't tell me to put it on uh, – I'm not, I don't want to even say the names of the places. Yeah. If you want me to promote it there, do it for me. I'll, just, I'll let you. I'm giving you permission. Okay, yeah, anyways, exactly. it's time to rank some songs. We got 12 songs. So above our heads, boom, graphics have changed. Names, numbers, song titles soon because that's what we're getting into right now. Part two or three of the podcast. This should be interesting. I'm hoping for something this time around. Um, we were so hopeful last week. You think another zero? 
I think two weeks another zero. It's, our, it's the one year anniversary we can. I think the thing is we one. matched. I think we matched on the other Pearl Jam. I just don't remember. Mm, I feel neither. like we had at least one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, okay, if it's not zero, which in my heart of hearts, I think it's going to be, uh, I'm going to go one for the one year. Um, and I think it's going to be a song in like the middle range of the list. I don't think we'll get our lower songs. I don't think we'll get our top picks. Some random one in the middle will match. That's far too much optimism for my personality. I really think zero, but I'll give you a one. I'll, t- I'll, I'll say this much. I have six question marks and the rest are X's. Oh, fuck. That's terrifying. Uh, and five of those, X, those uh, uh, question marks are in have the top X's. six. <laughs> I was say have X's next to them. <laughs> no, no. They will soon if we have to. But yeah, five okay. or six of the question marks I have are in the top six. Okay. Okay. So you this should be even be more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but watch me be wrong as we've proven time and time again. Yeah. What is, what is your guess? What is your guess? Uh, well, can't see, be I, all six. No, but I'd like to say uh, two because we've done Pearl Jam twice now. Okay. So that's that's my hope and guess. All right, let's try. But it will not be this first song. I can tell you that right now. Song number twelve, WMA. Leash. Leash. And I, you know what? As soon as you were talking about it, I knew that was going to be your number twelve. <laughs> I was like, so I just I need this. Yeah, I didn't really like it very much. Number eleven, glorified G. Rats. Ah, rats. <laughs> Funny. Oh, anyway, shocks. Uh, let's see here. Number ten, rearview mirror. Indifference. That's okay so far. We're good. Let's look at my top six here real quick. You said one of them. <laughs> okay. So that, there's something to go with. My That's number me. nine is indifference. Uh, w M A. Okay. See, when 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 I say one, and then you say one I've already said, that's at least promising to me because it gives more hope for the bottom or top, however you want to look at it. Uh, number eight, blood. Dissident. A dissident is here. Uh, my number seven's rats. Glorified G. Okay. See, th- that's another one that kind of makes me feel better. Glorified G. Number six, daughter. Elderly woman. Well turns into an elderly woman yeah just given enough time yes only if time is kind to that little girl <laughs> number five go daughter oh you're you're gonna hate this <sighs> yeah this is well my number four is elderly woman go <laughs> gotta love how that happens number yeah. three leash animal <laughs> well that's it it's all over now Big old zero. I knew it. I could feel it in my heart. It's your. This is your fault. You're too pessimistic. Oh, oh! I do it on purpose. You don't I, know how to... I change all of my song uh, listings as you're talking. Even though you don't know where the hell else anything would fall, anyways. Number two, dissident. Blood. Blood and number one, animal. Rearview mirror. How is that number one as compared to animal, man? Um, music is subjective and my ears work. I strongly disagree. <laughs> and again, I can point you to, well, actually, I, I can literally point you to our album rating screen where the vast majority of my albums are on top. So in case um, anyone, in case anyone needed proof, let's go ahead and just go transition right there and I'll show you myself. <laughs> Whoosh. Ah, uh, the album rating screen, that thing that we do, the the actual title of the podcast, and now we actually, you know, make it a thing to happen. Then we rate the record. Is that late? Am I late again? Yeah, because also, not only that, I didn't even do that at the beginning of today's episode. Oops. I oh, always that's... lose track of, like, what I'm supposed to do and not do in the beginning of the episode. Do you think a year in, I'd know, but ha, <laughs> wrong. That's okay. It's too funny to throw it in an hour and a half late. Next time, like, you should do it halfway through the album review while I'm saying something. Just <laughs> nowhere, Rate the record. I'm going to be like. I just drop off at the end. I'm just like, what are you, Internet Explorer? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 the new generation of kids won't understand that one. But that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh, my God. That was funny. That was funny. Okay, continue. Can you, I'll, I'll stop interrupting you because that was pretty funny. <laughs> Perfect, because now we have to put Pearl Jam's versus album, uh, this big goat sheep thing right here, popping up on the screen. <laughs> boom. So one year's worth of albums. Oh, my God. I just realized that I didn't even I didn't fix the Oasis picture at all. 
It's still just sitting there. Oh my god. Like we didn't see that little uh that little error. Oopsie daisies, it's all good now. Uh-oh. What error you're talking about? Don't worry about it. We had to put Pearl Jam's verses somewhere. So one year ago, just to think that Pearl Jam's 10 was the number one album on our list <laughs> for a single episode. Actually, no, it, it was more than that because uh, episode two, I, I can, I definitely remember. Uh, gee, what, oh my God. What did we do for episode two? Oh, it was Daughters. Yes. Yeah. Which did not beat 10. So yeah, Pearl Jam was number one for a little bit, but obviously that was very short lived. So now we have to figure out where else this new Pearl Jam album is going to go today. Na, 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 so as I pull out my calculator, go ahead and tell me what you thought of the album. Well, I did not have any preconceived notions about my score today. So when it came out as 73.33, I was happy, yet not surprised somehow. 73.33. That is like, I think, the minimum qualifier to make it just a solid B album for yourself. Excellent. And you rating it with a 40 is really going to knock that down, isn't it? Imagine I hated it that much. Oh, my God. Like, we go from 10 and, like, uh, uh, this album kind of felt like an extension of 10, but just a bit more, progre- like, uh, of a progression in their career. I hated it. <laughs> yeah, so that'd be so weird if that was actually the case. No, I oh didn't hate God. this album. It wasn't super fantastic, but I did enjoy it for the most part. My score came out to 79.16. So this is this is where I get oh. very curious to see how close it is to the original that we have ranked, because yeah. it comes out to 76.24%. It is between Animals as Leaders and Kevin Gilbert. Uh, so I was kind of, I was kind of hoping it'd be right next to ten. Oh my god, that'd be cool. But no, we are over here. It's going to be yeah. in this particular section over here. Look, it didn't even beat your boy Kevin. Isn't that great? Oh, uh, it is. It and is. Now he's being chewed on by a sheep. I hope you're happy. I well, he's dead. So oh, his bones are being gnawed on by a sheep. I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I I am ecstatic, thank you. I would certainly hope so. Man, we started this podcast in the B tier, and now a year later, we're still in the B tier. Woo-hoo! And not even that far off either. Like, I think, if I remember correctly, I think uh, 10 was like 74% or something along the lines of that. Mm, already closed the page, couldn't tell you. Don't worry about it, it's fine. I'll throw it in editing right here over my face. Boom, look at that number. So I'll know if I was correct or not. So, I mean, the audience will at the very least. But yeah, so we have now not only looked at Pearl Jam's second album, Versus, but we have gotten through one whole year of episodes. It doesn't equal 52 weeks because obviously we took some time off in those 52 weeks as we kind of need to. But at the same time, yeah, holy shit, we've been doing this for quite a while, haven't we? That is just, and I I know that I've, uh, I've stated this multiple, multiple times before today. But it is just wild to me that we are still going, that we have people that listen to us, which thank you. Like, I know at the beginning I was joking about what is wrong with you, but but seriously, like, I can't get my friends and family to listen to me. Yet some of you are here every week watching our extra videos, watching these, listening to us, interacting with us. And for that I personally so grateful again, what is wrong with you, but you know what? I really hope to see you next week, the week after that and going forward. And thank you for sticking with us for an entire year. That was very heartfelt of you. So I think my job as an editor, I'm going to put sound of, fart sound effects in while you're saying all that. Cut it out completely. Yeah, either just yeah, completely scoop it, or just put up like a bunch of crazy ass TikTok sound effects over top of you or oh something. Oh God! Like that. Air really horns. Just... I request air horns and whoopee cushions. Oh, I said farts, and that's all you're going to get. God damn it! But yeah, like not only just thank you for joining us for this episode, but yeah, for the entire year. I mean, it's it's been it's been great to watch this whole podcast grow. I mean. I don't know how much better we've gotten at doing it, but the idea is I think the show has gotten better as it's gone. And it's been because of the support of people like you. So thank you very much for checking us out, listening, giving us your opinions on albums and everything like that. And all the songs you like, your rankings, everything, your requests as well have always been fantastic. Don't forget you can actually request albums too. I, I usually say that at the beginning, but I'll just say it all now. Once again, thank you very much for joining us for this episode. If you like what you see today, remember to hit like, subscribe, rate, comment, follow, share, all of those things help build the musical community. You know that we're trying to do that. 
And of course, you can send your requests, which can also be found over at ratetherecord.ca, along with all the streaming links we have and the social media links. So make sure you're over there. Give us your album request because we are looking to do like a lot more of those. Yeah. We have, I'm going to say at least two coming up. Yeah. For now, but that number needs to be pumped up a little bit. So if you would so kindly have an idea in your head of what album you want, uh, there's like a 95% chance we'll do it. Oh, hell yeah. I say that because we've actively turned that one down before. Yeah. Uh, I won't say which one, obviously, but yeah. the idea is like there's just obviously some albums we will not do. Yeah, but they just the didn't point, fit. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, go ahead, do all that, be part of the community, great, and don't forget, if you do want to be part of the RTR Club, five bucks a month, go to ko-fi.com slash rate the record, but again, that can be found over at ratetherecord.ca. Wow, what a year it's been, so next week when we do this episode, none of this crap will be here, maybe I'll make videos of me, like, just destroying these decorations for no reason at all, like, no reason. My hat will be gone, but the glasses may come back. I I actually really like them. (laughs) <laughs> but you find them inconvenient to wear. So, I mean, like, I'm surprised you keep those over the hat. Um, So the only thing I don't like about the glasses is that the headphones squish them into my head. But the blue lenses are really pleasing to look through. So I like that a lot. Yeah, but doesn't blue light, like, keep you awake and everything like that and, like, strains your brain? So, <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes your brain needs a strain. Doesn't matter. All right, well, hopefully your brain doesn't strain too much because you have to give us that little hint reminder of what we want to, oh, not what we want to be listening to next week, what we're we going are. to be listening to next week. Next week is your choice. You got yeah, something yeah. lined up for us. So, I mean, why don't you go ahead and tell the people what they could expect? Well, no, alongside the spoiler, this is actually an album I've heard the entirety of multiple times. So, shocking. I've heard it a few, a few. The singer of this band has been called out for cultural appropriation on a multitude of occasions to progress their musical career. And so spoiler alert, it's the best damn thing by Avril Lavigne that we're listening to next week. Or maybe just specifically her Hello Kitty song. I don't know. We haven't decided yet, but we'll get there. Yes. (laughs) Um, Along that same vein, but I would like to listen to Avril Lavigne's first album first, so... Maybe I'll maybe I'll request that under a pseudonym. And I'll I'll just know because you'll be you'll be especially excited about it. And I'll be like, wait a minute. As soon as I said that, your face is like, I am currently having an aneurysm. I'm gonna close requests for the next little while. So you can thanks Savannah for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, that kind of gives you the idea for next week. No, it's not Avril Levine, but you'll have to come back to find out exactly who it is. Yeah. But until then, go ahead and go listen to some awesome music like Pearl Jam's Versus album, Why Not, to help us celebrate our one-year anniversary. Woo! So until Great. we see you again next Monday, go listen to awesome music, as I said. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.